Willie, uh, obviously the big question is how's Justin Herbert doing and do you feel like overall the team took advantage of the bye in terms of getting healthy, recharging? Um, Justin's doing well. Um, his, his bone is, is um, healing really good. Um, had a good week of practice last week. Um, had a good practice yesterday and I mean a lot of the guys that was nicked up, they're back and Seemed like they had some fresh legs after having a couple of days off and had a very enthusiastic practice yesterday. And I um, think they'd be ready to roll. Is Justin included in that group that were nicked up and are back? Um, I don't call his nicked up. He was beat up. Um, but he's getting close. He's getting really close. And um, I guess we'll see as the week go on, goes on and probably get another x-ray and see where his, where he is. And hopefully he's completely healed and ready to roll. Milk helps. I promise you that. It's helped him big time. Second row, Jerry. Milk? Yeah, Coach, same about Troy Dye. Uh, is he ready to roll? And could you talk about what a – Influence he is as a player on and off the field, and uh, some of the players you've coached. How does he compare? Um, Troy, he's he's back. He's ready to go. Um, he is. Troy's just. He's a kid that loves to play football. He loves competing. Um, he loves being around his teammates, and um, it's just fun. Fun to watch. It's fun to have him around. Um, he don't take a practice off. He don't take games off. I mean, when it's time to compete. He's ready to go every single time, and, and as a coach, you can appreciate that, and you wish your entire team that way. And those are the kind of guys you look for when you go and recruit guys that just live and and die to compete. You know, and he loves competing, and um, um, he's great to have. He's great to have around, and um, he's been big time for our, our defense um, this year. And glad we still have him coming back. Hey, Coach, obviously Justin and Braxton bring different things to the table. How does the offense kind of go about their week with the uncertainty of quarterback as to, you know, who will start? Um, are there different things they try and pick up on with each quarterback? Well, we know um, with, with Justin, he can he can run the entire offense, you know, and, and, and with Braxton, he's getting there. You know, again, he didn't, he didn't have the luxury of going through spring ball, getting all the reps, and going through training camp, getting all the reps, you know, so he, he had to just – get in midway through the season and say, hey, you go take care of this, you know, and not, I shouldn't say fair or not, but it's just unfortunate that he, he was thrown in that, uh, in that situation. But I think in the long run, it's going to help him tremendously of getting that experience in games, you know, as he continue to grow and, and, um, and continue to get better. He's going to be fine. Hey, Coach, I know you said kind of later in the week is when you're going to decide on the Justin. Justin question. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, maybe a couple Justin questions. All I don't right. know. Who knows? Uh, do you, I mean, do you have like a, you know, a, a day that, that you want to decide that by? And then yes. uh, what, what are those conversations <clears throat> like with Justin kind of when you're figuring out if he's, if he's good enough to go or not? Um, just ask him how he feels. How's that shoulder feeling? And um. That's pretty much it. I mean, if we can, if we leave it up to Justin, he would have played about three weeks ago, you know. But I um, mean, that's just the kind of kid, uh, the young man that he is. Um, um, he's such a competitor, just like Troy Die. He just loved to compete and want to help his teammates out. So if we'd have left it up to him, he would have played, like I say, three weeks ago, no matter if the bone was healed or not. Um, so um, it's just again, we'll get some, more, we'll get another X-ray this week and and see where the bone is, is where it's healed. Hopefully it's completely healed and he can play. Um, but timeline, um, say three fifty nine on Saturday. <laughs> hey coach, you know in today's day and age, you know high schoolers they commit, they decommit to different schools. Any talk with Braxton or maybe what he's going through after you know first committing to Arizona and now you know obviously committing and playing for Oregon. Now he has a chance to step in as a true freshman and play against the Wildcats. Any idea what that thought process might be like for him? Uh, no, we haven't even talked about that. You know that um, we haven't even brought that up since that happened back in this February or January, whenever it happened back then. Um, hadn't talked about that at all. You know, uh, Braxton and I just 
talked about him and his development and, and um, just continue to try to get better each and every week and don't worry about the naysayers or whatever. I, I also um, shared a story with him about the quarterback I had at South Florida. You know, um, his freshman year, I put him in. His first two passes was interception, and everyone said the kid sucked, you know, and he couldn't play. It was amazing. Now he's a hero, you know. So um shared that story with him and just tell him you just can't get caught up in that. You understand where you're at, and you got to continue to develop and let him know that we believe in him, and that's why we want him here. We know what he's capable of doing and, and know that he will continue to improve, and um, he's going to be fine. Willie, another quarterback question. This one about Khalil Tate, though. You guys have faced a lot of dynamic quarterbacks uh, I like this season. One. Yeah, no, nothing like him. Do you have to do anything extra special this week? I know there's other pieces of the puzzle with their offense, but he's a pretty big piece of that. Is there anything extra you guys kind of have to do this week uh, to make sure you can contain him on Saturday? Pray. <laughs> I mean, he's, 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 I mean, no one stopped him yet this year. Um, um, he's a heck of a talent, um, big time football player, and he's really good with the ball in his hand, you know. But def defensively, we just we got to be disciplined, you know. We got to be disciplined and uh, make sure we do a good job of wrapping up and and getting everybody to the ball. Guys got to run to the ball, and um, probably the most important thing we got to be line we got to get lined up, you know. Um, you see, a lot of the plays, the big plays they make defenses aren't aren't aligned right. Um, part of it because of the tempo and they're not getting set up. Um, I don't think you can complicate things trying to defend it. I think that'll get you too when you ask your guy to do too much and and um, then they don't do anything right, you know. But I will say this, we got to be really good at tackling, something we focus on a lot during the bye week. Uh, we got to do a great job of tackling and um, – Make sure I mean we're gonna know where he's at. We just gotta good, do a good job of getting to him and and tackle him. I mean he's he's a good fo football player along with their backs. Their backs are pretty good players too, and and they have some receivers that can make plays. It's a dynamic offense and um, have the challenges, you know. But if we're, we're if we're on the top of our game and and um, play with a lot of emotion and passion and uh, discipline, then uh, we'll have a chance. Willie, Tate didn't start to begin the season. Have you ever been in that position where you had a guy on your team and maybe didn't know what he could do until you saw him under the lights? Um, not at quarterback position. Probably, probably another position, but not the quarterback position. Um, I got to think that they knew what he can do. You know, they probably just didn't necessarily think he was ready yet, you know, and – I always say the spotlight does strange things to some people. Some people show up and show out, and some people um, go high. You know, this kid show up and show out um, under the spotlight. Um, and, and I mean, they, they have a couple of good talented uh, quarterbacks. Even the guy before him uh, was talented. He wasn't Tate, but he, he's a pretty good athlete. You know, so, um, and to be honest with you, you really don't know what you have until you throw them out there in the game. You know, you you can kind of assume and practice, but, again, you don't know until you get out um, in front of 50, 60,000 people and see what they're capable of doing. We all know about what he can do on the ground, but what's his skills passing like? What have you evaluated him as, as a passer? Um, he He's completed some passes. You know, he completed a couple down the field. He throws some screen passes and some hitches and – some deep balls. Um, I think he's pretty good at what they ask him to do. You know, they don't ask him to throw it 20, 30 times a game. You know, um, the way they run the football, they don't have to. It's kind of, again, it's option football. You know, so, um, um, but when they do ask him to throw, he's he's pretty effective with that as well. Hey, Coach, you talked about it being a two-game season. How the guys embrace that mentality, you know, maybe forgetting about the first past 10 and now looking forward to just these two games at home. Um, they've been good. You know, uh, like I say, we had a, a very energetic practice yesterday, and we talked about enjoying these last two weeks with, with the seniors, you know, and, and telling the seniors to enjoy it as well because they're going to miss it. You know, this is their last two opportunity to play in Austin Stadium. You know, something they all dreamed of coming in here, just playing and trying to make it their best two games they ever played in Austin Stadium, you know, and um, the games before before this, there's nothing you can do about those but put it behind and, 
and um and play these last two and like i said earlier we have a lot to, to play for and um and that's credit to our players of putting our football team in a situation where this time of year you're still playing for something you know and that was the work that they put in early in the year you know and even though we had some bumps along the way then we still got a chance to do some things so um they're excited about it uh, great opportunity great challenge ahead of us and um, i think they look forward to um taking advantage of those opportunities yeah, Coach, you had a rare opportunity Saturday night to see your next two opponents. Were you able to watch that game and live? And uh, if so, what did you take from that? Uh, were you encouraged by Oregon State running the ball as well as they did against Arizona? Um, I didn't. I was with my um, kids. I had a rare opportunity to spend time with them and enjoy them. And it was great. We went to the Globe Trotter game and – my two-year-old now has a ball, and she's trying to spin it on her finger now. Um, but I spent time with them this this weekend and um, on Saturday. So, but I watched. I did watch them um, yesterday and and to this morning, you know, to see them. But didn't watch them Saturday. I was watching Morgan and Jackson, and not much. Will Will's older now. He don't spend as much time with Dad. You know. He, kind of do his own thing now. Like, can I get a dap or something? He don't give me a hug or anything. But uh, it was a joy spending time with Morgan. She is a fire plug for sure. What did you take from what you saw the last two days? Um, out of which team? Um, really didn't watch, didn't pay too much attention to Oregon State, what they were trying to do, anything. It was more focusing on – um, Arizona and what they're doing and um, both on both sides of the ball and special teams and and what we can do to to try to um, exploit some of their their weaknesses you know so focus more on them and come next week we'll focus a lot on on Oregon State you know they did do some good things especially in the second half Oregon State did you know um, running the football they started to run with some power and went downhill on them and did some good things. Colin Schooler seems to just make the plays that are needed to be made for Arizona. What's your impressions of him and just the overall impressions of Arizona's defense? Um, he's, a, he's a really good football player. Um, I like him. He's, he's, he's a football player. He's one of those kids. Um, you might look at him and like, oh, I don't know if this kid can play, but you turn on the film, he's, he's a football player. He's like his brother, tough and, and just – um, love to play the game. And then um, you look at their team, they're, they're young on defense. They have a lot of young guys playing for them right now, and they play hard. Uh, um, they do some things to try to disrupt what you're doing up front in your blocking schemes, you know, but they play really hard and they're young, and um, they, they'll they give up some things, but they also get some in return because of how aggressive they are. So um, they do a great job of intercepting the ball. You can see that. But um, – like I said, they give up some things and and they get some things back. So we got to be on our A game, um, both running and throwing the ball. Right. It's been two weeks. I know you guys have a lot of questions. Willie, uh, you were already asked about Braxton, but obviously when you were hired, you had to scramble and, and put together a recruiting class. Several of those guys were committed to Arizona. What's kind of your relationship like with Rich Rodriguez after that? Uh, Kind of what it was like before that, you know, we see each other. Hello, how you doing, coach? And that's pretty much it. You know, I don't think, well, at least I know with me, I don't know about other coaches, I don't think you take it too personal. It is, it is what it is. I mean, we all understand what recruiting is and um, got to do it to the end and you never know what's going to happen. You know, these kids have choices and they have the right to do whatever they decide to do and, again, don't necessarily like it at times, but it is what it is. So you have to be prepared for everything. But I don't think there's any animosity or anything like that. You know, um, I respect him, and I would say he respect me. <laughs>